Hello, welcome back to another video on comic buying tip. In the first video, I talk about effort. The other E is it is essential to know how to grade. Yes, I beat on this dead horse so often on my channel that without knowing how to grade, it is so hard to buy, to make a good deal. Regardless if you're buying for your own personal collection or buy to flip, you must know how to grade. How can anyone tell? I'm talking about raw books here. How can anyone tell if they got a good deal or a great deal or a fair deal if that person does not know how to grade? How? Right? Does anybody here disagree? You know, whenever I saw a video on YouTube or someone say, I got this great deal on this Silver Edge books for 25 bucks and they hold up something like a low grade books. I'm just like, maybe it was not a great deal. Maybe it was a fair deal. Big difference between a great deal and a fair deal. But a lot of people like to li live in a fantasy land to make themselves feel better, to justify that they make a good deal. Okay, people tend to make that kind of mistake, but let's go back to grading. In life, not all of us can be good at something, but we can be proficient at it, okay? Like math. Math is easy for me. I'm very good with math. Some people will claim that they are very bad at math, but a lot, the majority of the people is probably in the middle somewhere. Yeah, they're not great, but they're not horrible at math. They're sufficient enough to be able to add 2 plus 3 equal 5, right? So when it comes down to grading, I am a firm believer it is similar. Some people are exceptionally good at grading, okay? And some people are horrific at grading, no matter how much effort they put into it. But a lot of people are in the middle. By being in the middle, it requires effort and desire to learn how to grade. Okay, so there's no room for laziness here. Okay, that's why I go back to the very first video and talk about effort. There's no room. You can't be lazy at learning how to grade. It's the fundamental base to buy raw books. Now, you don't have to agree with CGC, okay? A lot of people, like I, like I mentioned earlier in this video, could be buying for your own personal collection. I didn't start out buying a lot of books to flip, okay? I bought a lot of books for my personal collection, but I honed my skills on how to grade in order to not overpay. Agree? Okay, so how I learned to grade, especially from 2008 to now, is that in those early years, 2008, 2009, 2010, as I returned to the hobby, I realized quickly, quickly, how not so adequate I was at grading. I returned to the hobby in 2008 and right away I submit a hundred books. My very first batch to CGC was 100 books. And at best I was maybe, I try to remember, but I think I was barely right on 25%. Like one out of four books, I was close. I was far off on a lot of books. So right away I knew for me to man up on a lot of bigger books, I need to hone up my skills on grading. And the best tools out there is Heritage. Heritage has the most extensive database of CCC slabs. Okay, so what I did back in those early years was I would type in you know CCC 6.5. And right there, there will be hundreds of examples of 6.5. And I will study 
each and every scan to see why something is 6.5 and why another book is a 6.5. There are so many things I can look at on a daily basis. And I did. Every day, I pick a grade randomly. Oh, it could be 8.5. And I would just do a quick search and pops up hundreds of examples. And I would go through, not 100 every day, but I go through 20 or 30 of them. I did this regularly. Okay, there is no shortcut to it. And then, as I was going through the learning process myself, certainly I keep track. I keep, I keep the score on how well I do as far as submitting my book to CGC. Okay, so I submitted a lot of books between 2008 through 2010. I submitted 800 books in three years. Yeah, that's a lot of books. But I got a lot of good learning experience from that. And over time, I felt much improved. And I still learn a little bit here and there, even last year. Okay, so it's an ongoing learning process for me because I have not seen every situation. You know, I'm not a CGC graders that see something like, you know, 5,000 books a month. Yeah they likely have seen a lot more different situation than I have, okay? I submitted, by my own estimate, roughly 1,400 books to CCC over the past 12 years, okay? Not huge, 1,400 is not massive, but it is big enough of a sample size for me to look at things and say, okay, I'm confident that I am on the spot. A lot of time I submit 20 to 25 books and you know if I'm consistent, that's the key word, consistent, I might nail 75% to 80% of the books and then the rest I might be one up or one down as far as grading. It's not a perfect science. I understand that. I think regardless if you agree with CCC regardless if you're never going to use CCC, but if you are buying raw books. At the minimum, get yourself an overstreet grading book. That's a good foundation to have if you have never graded before. It's a good foundation to have. Okay, I'm not poo-poo the idea that overstreet grading guide is useless. It's not useless. It's useful but it is much more useful once you understand it. And then once you understand the little variance, the little variation, the little nuances that CGC may different. So in general, this is a very general statement. CGC grade more lenient than the overstreet standard. So if you grade straight on overstreet standard, you're likely undergrading if you ever plan to use CCC or CBCS. Let's make it very clear, CBCS are the, pretty much the same bunch of professional graders like CCC, so they're not gonna be that much different, even though a lot of people, well, some people, I'm sure, can't wait to type CBCS is stricter. Yeah. Do I need to go there? <laughs> oh God, never fail. I, I, I can't recall not seeing that kind of comparison from CBCS users. Seem like every time I talk about or trying to say that they both very similar, somebody couldn't wait to, to disagree with me. But when it comes down to grading, just know that if, if you grade strict with over street, you're likely under grade compared to CCC. So it's not a bad thing for you or me as a buyer to buy a book from a seller that grade strictly 
based on over street grading standard because they are old school. Okay, to me, whenever I see a seller that prof that profess his uh, standard with over street and strictness, that's a good start for me and you. So keep your eyes open for listings that uh, talk about over street standards because it's there's no I, I think those that submit enough books will agree with me okay in general what I what, everything that I just said so far as far as the differences between CGC or CBCS compared to Overstreet nothing that I just said should be news for many people so my advice to people is you know I put out at least every other week grading videos where I show a book raw using my comic shop scans because they have great high quality standards and I go through the process on how I view and create the books with my eyes hopefully that will give people the insight on how I approach grading those books and I focus a lot on the mid to low grade level the tougher books to grade using my comic shop but before I go I just want to remind people a lot of people ask me for help with grading and I talk about this in many videos but yet some people still are not familiar look at the quality of the, the scans on my comic shop if you ask me for help or for my opinions that should be the gold standards okay can you give me something less absolutely but don't expect my opinion of any sort if you give me just the front cover quite a few people still do that even though I stress that I cannot grade with just the front cover. Some people will just give me the front cover. They may give me six different angles of the front cover. Yeah, it's frustrating for me because whenever I get those kind of uh, inquiry for help, I don't know what to say. Even as I am very confident in my grading skills, I am always prepared to see other people disagreeing with me. Okay, take, take a look at this. I wanna, before, I wanna slide in a comment that I got in one of my videos. Yeah, I get these kind of comments in many videos from people that have no idea if I know what I'm doing or not. They may stumble across a video this person right here has never commented before and I have never seen another comment since. Insane, absolutely insane to have to debate the fact that it is not an exact science. If you cannot wrap your head around that fact that grading is not an exact science, you will likely not have a very good learning experience as far as grading because you will be disappointed often that CGC or CBCS or a potential buyer or seller would disagree with you. That's just the way things are. So the sooner you, you accept that fact that other people may disagree with you, and the sooner you realize that that's why it helped company like CGC or CBCS or PGX to thrive so much in the past few years is that it removed that argument. Some people still will, okay? Make, make no mistake. Some people will still argue and disagree with CGC grade on any given slabs. Yes, that, that can still happen, but we know for the most part the market tend to be okay with that that's the reason why tens and thousands of books exchange hands in slabs on a daily 
basis regardless if people hate it or dislike slaps the slaps are here to stay so hopefully i have answered all the questions i can but feel free to ask me if i left out something when it come down to grading or learning to grade okay start out with the over street if you don't want to that's fine but Spend as much time as you can over on Heritage website. They have examples of every grade in abundance. You can study and study and study and get better there. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.